sit back and enjoy. The, the terrific thing we have with our Finnis Lithium project is that it's a, it's a low risk lithium project, it's fully approved, it's fully funded, uh, it's under construction right now. We've got uh, you know, strong backing from, from both the Northern Territory and the, uh, and the Federal Government. Uh, we've got binding offtake in place with, uh, with, with the largest lithium producer in, on the, in the world, with Ganfeng. Uh, we've got offtake and sales agreements in place with, with Yahua that link us into Tesla's supply chain. And we're building one of the most capital efficient lithium projects uh, around the globe. Uh, with only a, a start-up capex of, of $90 million Australian, enabling us to produce close to 200,000 tonnes per annum of lithium concentrate per annum, and with, uh, with prices you know, well above $1,000 a tonne now and forecast into the future, um, you know, we're in a really excellent position to start, uh, start production of, of lithium you know, within 12 months. So beyond the 10-year mine life that we've defined to date as stage one, which is producing high-quality concentrates, lithium concentrates out of Darwin, uh, we're investing now into laying the foundation for stage two. Uh, so that's uh, really you know, enabling ourselves to be able to expand production and extend production from the project. Uh, and we've got every incentive, if you like, if you like with you know, you know, high lithium prices, um, demand from a, you know, a whole bunch of potential customers that missed out on offtake to date, uh, for us to be you know, pulling every lever we can as a company to enable us to sort of expand and bring forward production as quickly as we can. Um, so, and, and, the, and the beauty of the project is with low startup capex, you know, for, for, as we've shown in our DFS, for, for less, less than $40 million Australian, um, potentially we can look to double our process plant capacity. Um, so yeah, really excellent economics for the project um, as we look to, to expand towards stage two. And then in regards to stage three, uh, yeah, we're already investing into feasibility studies to consider the potential to, um, to produce lithium hydroxide uh, from Northern Australia um, with strong support um, uh, and letters of interest from, uh, from the Northern Territory Government for us to consider uh, the uh, the, um, the middle arm um, sustainable manufacturing precinct uh, adjacent to to, uh, to the project and to the city of Darwin, um, as well as um, government funding from the federal government to undertake those feasibility studies. And uh, and then you know, there's a lot of interest uh, again from the downstream strategics in how they might potentially um, be involved and in, in partnering in delivering uh, stage three alongside core. You know, if we're talking about stage one, it's, it's our ability to tap straight into existing infrastructure that reduces the capex of the project. So, you know, we can, we, you know, we're, the grants mine and processing facility is only 500 metres from the bitumen road that connects us all the way to Darwin Port. Uh, it also connects our workforce back to the suburbs of Darwin. So, you know, the project's only 45 minutes daily commute from suburbs of Darwin, which means that it's been great in regards to attracting good people and recruiting to the project, so we've had a lot of success there. Um, as we we're expecting, you know, we're an hour's drive from the international airport. Um, unimportantly, I think from an ESG perspective and, and uh, emissions profile, you know, we're investing in additional capex to, um, which is within that $89 million number, uh, to, to, uh, to connect to um, the, the, the Northern Territory power grid, and then that gives us the ability to, um, to uh, contract and source renewable generated power for the project and low emission gas fired power for the project. So you know, all of those things work in, in favour in regards to you know, capital efficiency, uh, emissions efficiency, and, and actually sort of you know, been able to sort of manage and attract a sustainable workforce. 